Mining is still considered a man's game, but are women running onto the mining pitch? Earlier I sat down with the Chamber of Mines Vice President, Kainsile Kweyama, to get her take on the role of women in mining. First, the mining sector was just thought of as this area where women will never go. So the fact that there are women in such senior roles and executives and even mine owners is saying to everybody out there that you can actually be a woman and have a career in the mining space, which was unthought of, let's say, 20 years ago. Uh, it's also bringing in a diversity to the mining industry where people used to think all like males and all like miners and now at least we can start seeing a mix of conversations around boardroom tables, around the mine space and even underground. Does that diversity necessarily translate into better earnings? For women? For the, for the mining companies? We haven't seen it as much. Hey. I think if we think of Anglo-American specifically, we had a CEO, uh, a female CEO as our global CEO, and we saw some improvement, but then we also saw quite a downturn. And there's a number of factors that could be contributed to that. You know, there was the economic downturn, there was that. So I don't think that analysis has been done. Uh, and I don't think there are enough women that you can probably take a good body of them and analyze the results of the companies that are being run by yeah. women and those that are not. So maybe we are not there yet. Not there yet. And maybe if we look at the legislative environment in South Africa, the last three mining ministers, with the exception of the current one, have all been women. Yeah. Do you think this is any way uh, impacted into some of the empowerment we're seeing around women or pieces of legislation driving empowerment in the industry because of that female leadership? It definitely has because if you look at the mining charter and see a, a, a focus on in addition to leadership there is also a women in mining focus but if you also look at uh, organizations such as women in mining South Africa and you look at the various spread of the women in mining specific programs those were put into place when the women uh, cabinet ministers were, were, were the ones that were running with the mining charter. And I don't necessarily think that now that we have a male uh, for a minister that will change because the gender policies are policies of the ruling party. Mm -hmm. So we would expect to see that coming through. But we definitely have seen that there has been more focus. There has been a, 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 a woman out there running and mm -hmm. saying, you know, you will do this, you will do that. So leadership does matter, and I think that is the conversation we are getting to, that leadership by a female, by somebody who understands and will take up mm -hmm. the cause of women. But having said that, the cause of women should not be only by women. Yes. It should be one that is embraced by males and females so that we can ensure that it happens. That otherwise, we will become a little body that is uh, propelling the female yeah. cause and it will not permeate throughout the mining sector. If we look at the core of the mining business, at the very center is very hard and technical skills that are required. Do we have a strong pipeline uh, to feed into the demands that the industry needs? As companies we have gone, and as Anglo-Americans specifically, we have put in policies that have a bias towards females. So from the level of our bursaries, from uh, mentoring, from fast tracking, we have said it has to be 50% women because precisely if you don't have the pipeline, then you are never going to see the people uh, filtering through to the to the necessary levels. So for technical bursaries, technical uh, programs, uh, technical fast tracking in the engineering fields, we do have a 50% bias towards women. We even go as far as taking it to the primary school level because we realize that by the time people come to university and have to make choices, uh, they have already been influenced by several uh, factors along the so we've put together a techno girl project mm -hmm. so that we expose young girls to technical skills, to their mining specific skills, and hopefully they will then see that as they make their choices around engineering or geology or all the, the mining related fields at Varsity. Every week we bring you a woman who is flexing her power muscles on the global stage. Let's take a look at the woman named this year's CEO of the Year at the Africa CEO Forum. Daphne Mashile Nkosi is the first South African woman to own a manganese mine and has earned the title of SA's Iron Lady of Mining by breaking into the boys club. As executive chairperson of Kalahari Manganese, she's responsible for creating 30,000 jobs in the Northern Cape. She's also chairperson of the Women's Development Bank Trust and constantly strives to uplift women in her field. She was named CEO of the Year at this year's Africa CEO Forum held in Switzerland, 
which she says shows that African women can make their mark in the historically male-dominated mining industry. That's all from Women and Wealth this week. If you want more Women and Wealth, don't miss the Women's Live conference taking place this Friday at the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Do remember that we like to talk to you on Twitter. Follow me at Nozi Pombandra or at CNBC Africa. And don't forget that our hashtag is WOW14. Until next time, stay empowered.